I'm Tex, I'm Guardians of the Children. Tell us the difference. Of, is your organization an MC? Is it categorized just like what other people think is in society as a, as a biker gang? You know, I, I get this question a lot, man. And, uh, I, I think it's hard to, uh, it, it's definitely hard to overcome that stereotype that the public has of MCs. Um, but we're not even an MC. Uh, we're, we're a charity organization, a 501c3 registered. Uh, you can go to guidestar.org to, to see our listing there. Um, we just happen to be a charity organization that works with abused kids, and we love motorcycles. That's that's the bottom line. Um, we don't get paid to do what we do. We work with abused kids, man. It's, it's one of the toughest things out there to do every day. Um, we do this for free. We do this out of the kindness of our hearts, and quite honestly, we do it because somebody's got to do it. Well, what if, uh, you know, tell you, what if I do fund your organization? What if I donate? How do I know that my money is going to the kids and not just through gas tanks and parties. <laughs> <laughs> uh, beers, booze, and dates, as they yep. say. You know, uh, not only can we provide a, a tax receipt for anybody who uh, donates a, a sum of money that they request a tax receipt from us, we include our EIN on there. Uh, you can go to guidestar.org, punch in our organization's name, Guardians of the Children. We pop up, we've got an, an EIN with the IRS. We were founded in February of 2006, so 14 years. Uh, you know, we've We've, we've done a lot of charity events, we've written a lot of tax letters, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're in a couple different systems, so we'd be, you'd be alright. Oh, let's say that the society, that our community gives you money, where exactly does it go? I mean, can you, can you actually show us or tell us how, how it gets distributed? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, uh, so every city that we're, we're in has its own books, has its own record keeping, and in San Antonio we've got our own, uh, you know, we've got treasure just like any organization does that keeps track of our funds where it's spent. All the money that our chapter receives is spent inside Bear County. Um, we, we spend that money directly assisting our kids, help them recover from this tragedy of abuse that, that most people don't want to acknowledge exists, uh, that we gladly acknowledge. Um, we do not do that through you know monetary funding of the family. You know, the, the family can't call us and say, oh, I need another uh, you know $200 shot on the rent or anything like that. We don't do that. But if uh, a kid we're working with needs extra counseling and they can't get in quick enough to the local child advocacy center to get scheduling because they're so backed up, we'll pay for a third party counselor. If um, you know there's there's something going on at home that's creating an issue, you know, we had a um, we had a family that just uh, that just needed the whole family to get involved in family counseling to help mend this this tragedy and for them to understand what happened to their child and the child to understand why the parents didn't understand, you know, we paid for all of them to do the counseling. Uh, in addition to doing just that, we, we do a lot of events that we call group therapy with our kids where we get these kids together in this group environment where they get to realize that they're not alone. The biggest tragedy of child abuse is a child feeling like they're alone, that they're the only one who's ever suffered this abuse. So when we do a group event with them, we get them all together, they realize they're not alone. And that's probably the biggest healing factor that these kids get is they not only get to realize they're not alone, but they get to hang out with other kids and just play in a safe, friendly, loving environment where they don't have to worry about anything. They just come and have fun. So any of these events that we do for our kids are, are free to kids because I never, we never want you know money to be an issue for a kid to heal. In addition to doing that, we have a we have a whole side of our organization that deals with prevention where we try and teach people how they can recognize and react to child abuse, what those signs are, what they're looking for, so that way, you know, you know what it is that you need to do when you suspect child abuse. So there's other organizations, I'm sure, that do the same things that you do. And when I ask you what separates you from the rest, from my understanding, none of your members or anybody associated with the Guardians of Children get paid. Yeah. So can you explain how do you, I mean, ethically, do you guys just do it out of your kindness of your heart and that's it? <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's funny during COVID, there was all this talk of uh, there's, there's grants and loans and forgiveness, SBA programs for nonprofits to, you know, to help weather the storm. And, 
um, you know, to, to get your funding. And, uh, we looked at applying for them because, you know, we have, we have expenses for our families and the things that we do, but uh, we don't qualify for any of them because we don't have any payroll. Uh, you know, we, we do this for, for free. Uh, we do this because it's something we're passionate about. Uh, I, I'll be straight up honest with, uh, with you. Uh, I do this because I was raped when I was 13. Um, that's why I do this, because I want to help somebody else who's been there. So when I meet that 13-year-old that boy who's been in that same situation, I, I can genuinely look at him and say, I know how you feel, but I can be that light that shows them that there's, there's something better on the other side, that you don't got to be a victim. You can become a victor of your circumstances. You're not defined by your past. You're defined by where you're going. So we want our kids to know where they're going. So no, we do this because it's the right thing to do, because... It's what we're passionate about. We don't get paid to do it. I mean, I, I work just as much on this organization as I do my real job. Um, you know, I, the only difference is at five o'clock I stop with my real job. Uh, this organization, this, this, this mission that we're on, you know, we get calls at 2 a.m. We get calls at 10 a.m. We get calls all the time at any time. If, if a child needs us, we're there for them. No matter the time. No matter the time. day. No. Uh, that's the thing that, uh, that that's kind of the thing when you get patched in this organization and become a patch member it's a it's not just an honor to become patched it's also kind of a, a commitment you're committing that your phone's on 24 hours a day seven days a week and when you get assigned a family that you're responsible for it doesn't matter when they call you if they call you you you're there you are their their personal guardian like, like you're their personal guardian angel if you want to call it that and they need you they call you and show up. And so we get those calls. Uh, we've got calls at 2 a.m. on a Saturday night, you know. Uh, mom's afraid, thinks somebody's in their backyard, kid's not sleeping, you know, whatever it is. We show up. That's what we commit to because somebody needs to do it. Police can't do it. You know, they, they can only show up if there's a crime. Mm. But they can't show up before the crime happens. So we show up to prevent a child from getting hurt. All right. So those are the easy questions. That's really that's the hard. That's the easy ones. <laughs> yeah. So the hard question is this, man. Everybody can talk, right? Yeah. Everybody can talk and say bullshit. So let's talk about the real things. What about statistics? Like over the course of the year, how many true court appear uh, court wins did you have versus losses in a year? Yeah. Or, or you know, just give me some numbers, some statistical numbers that people can actually know. Yeah. And, and I know you want to text it. Whatever comes out of your mouth is true. So you know, I'll, I'll tell you this: we deal with a hundred families on average a year. A right. hundred families that are all active or dismissed or victory court cases. Actual court appearances depends upon the year. Um, but since we've started, we've handled and seen a successful over two hundred court cases. Uh, it, it's one of those things that sadly we don't keep very good track of, mm -hmm. um, because it's it's more important for us to keep track of how our kids are doing than. You know how many wins do we have last yeah. month you know i'm more worried about you know how is this new little guardian that we just brought in going to adapt to the changing environment how are they gonna how can i overcome this child who you can't physically touch how can i help them overcome that and become a victor how can i show them what a safe world is when they've been hurt so bad how can i show this seven-year-old who's had things done to him that are not natural for a boy to ever have done to him by somebody he trusted, how can I show him that other males, adult males, are safe? So I know we've helped over 200 cases go through, but sadly our court system, it takes a while. Um, most cases, it's a two to three year process from the date the child says something to the date that they get to go in front of a court and tell their story. It's two to three years. Do you remember what you did two to three years ago? I mean, I'm. These kids are, are, they're my heroes. Uh, they jokingly always look at us, you know, we know they look up to us and they, they admire us. I mean, we're the bikers, we're the, we're the big tough guys. We got the Harleys, the motorcycles, we show up, we make a lot of noise, we scare their neighbors. But quite honestly, man, these kids are my heroes. Um, when, I, when I get to see, you know, Red Fox get to go from being this timid, little, shy, scared boy, you know, I'm playing with him on, on, in, in his living room for the first time, meeting him, and we're, we're playing at kind of a distance, and we're, he's, he's barely engaging, and I'm trying to get him to talk, tell me who Iron Man is, and who's Superman, and who's this action figure, to when I go visit him at a school, and he's walking in line, and he sees me, and he runs out of line, and his teacher's yelling at me, get back here, get back here, and he just, doesn't matter, he comes and gives me this big old jumps in my arms, gives me this hug. 
that's what we're concerned about. That's that's the moment that I look for in a kid, seeing them overcome their situation. <laughs> we're in court just about every month. Uh, you know, I'm I'm fielding new cases. Where we we've got multiple families we're already talking to again, interviewing and getting ready to bring in our our programs and. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a revolving door. We, as soon as they come in, you know, we've got kids that are aging out, hitting 18 years old and moving on to adulthood and leaving our program. So it's, it's, it's a constant cycle. So let's say hypothetically that uh, somebody is watching this either on social media, a website, wherever it is on, on the internet, and uh, the parents or the child themselves wants to get a hold of you. How can they get a hold of you? Easiest way is to go to our Facebook. Uh, if you type in uh, at gocsatx.com on Facebook, you, you get right to us. Our Facebook Messenger, um, there's about six six people that answer that and monitor. Um, if you want to, uh, you can go to our website as well, gocsatx.com. We have a contact us section in there. That, that email gets sent to the entire board of directors for San Antonio. Um, and if it's an emergency and you want our involvement right now, we actually have a phone number, uh, 210-GOC-HELP. Uh, I don't know what those digits are, but I just know it's 210 GOC help. It goes right to us as well. Very good. And to kind of end things off, uh, I've been fortunate enough to work with uh, Guardians of Children on this video, and I wanted you to maybe kind of address your vision and your mission behind the whole idea that you brought to us uh, to produce this video. Yeah. So this video was, uh, was kind of a brainchild of our chapter for a while. Um, we really wanted to, to kind of show a way that we could tell you what we do with kids and maybe give you a glimpse into what we deal with. Uh, it, it's, it's not easy. Um, sorry. It's not easy knowing um, some of these stories. You know, meeting these kids and getting to hear uh, their abuse, you know, and, and when you get to court and you listen to them tell their story, and it, it's heartbreaking. It, it, it's something that just eats at you for the rest of your life. Um, these are stories I will never forget. Um, you know, I've got tattoos, but uh, these are tattoos on my mind of what these kids have gone through, these, these, these victors have gone through. And this video that we produced, we wanted to showcase and, and it's hard hitting right at the gate to catch that moment of pain, to catch that, oh my God, that, 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 that thing that society doesn't want to acknowledge that's silently there. I mean, one in five girls, one in eight boys are going to be sexually abused or physically abused by the time they're 18. Over 60% of adults identify as having been either emotionally, physically, or sexually abused by the time they enter adulthood. Society doesn't acknowledge this. So this video was, we wanted it to acknowledge that abuse that happens and that trauma, that, that impact it has on the family, but we want to highlight the amazing, amazing turnaround that a child can have. They are resilient, resilient, way better than adults. And what I love about this video is you get to see that. You get to see a child go from being a victim, from being scared, from not even wanting to enter a courtroom and we tried to capture as best we could that moment where a child feels like they have the power, that they are the ones who are in control, not their victim. I think the best way I can put it is uh, we had a child, um, every child gets to name themselves. You know, my, my, my birth given name is a text. Uh, although I, my, it might as well be at this point because everybody knows me as it. Uh, but we had a child, uh, she chose to name herself Nightmare. And this is a, this is a sweet, petite little little girl. And when I'm, it's a, kind of a rough name. It's a tough name for a little petite girl that loves to clean and cook and loves dolls and loves to do things. And so we asked her, well, you know, why'd you pick that name? And she said, because he was my nightmare, but now I'm going to be his. Wow. And that's what I love. I love watching these kids transform from a victim to a victor to where they're not going to be bothered by this guy that hurt them anymore. They're not going to care that that's not what's going to define who they are. That they're going to be bigger than what they've been through and they're going to rise above that situation. That they're going to shine. That they're going to be this awesome person because 
what happened to them didn't hold them back, it flung them forward into a better future. Wow. I mean, I'm speechless. Because, I mean, <laughs> I mean the words that you're saying, you know, Tex, I, I, I've known you for a long time. And, and although I'm asking some serious questions, the only reason I'm asking is because, of course, these are the questions that some of the viewers may have. Yeah. And those are the questions that I may have had before I knew you. But in my opinion, and you're a true inspiration as well as your organization to not only sure. the families, the kids, <laughs> and this nation. So I don't, I don't play around with those words. So uh, we want to thank you for coming out raw and real. And uh, thanks for having me. You know what? Keep doing what you're doing because guess what? You're saving people's lives and you're saving kids' lives and you're making a difference in this world. So. Thank you, you know, very much, Tex. Thank you so you know, much. You uh, know, if I can leave with saying anything, yes. it's, it's I always try and encourage everybody whenever we uh, do any type of video or any, any speech that if you see something, do something. Don't just sit on the sidelines. Don't just wait for somebody else to make that call. Pick up a phone. Make a call. Do something about it because I'm, I promise if you suspect it, it's probably happening. Yeah. So, it's time to get better. Not bitter, right, bud? That's up. absolutely right. All right. Oh, thanks. Thanks for having me, man. You're awesome. Love you. Love you too, bro.